Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. We have a great show ahead for you guys. We will be starting off with what feels like the first time in forever I'm going to be talking about an actual basketball game being played tomorrow night. Yes, the Celtics and the Mavs open the NBA Finals tomorrow night at TD Garden. I'm going to give you my betting and fantasy preview there. Then I'm going to rank my top 10 for the first time. These rankings are based off of my own opinion as to who you should roster in terms of daily fantasy basketball and hockey. So for both finals, I will have you set with the top 10 players who I think will be your best options to roster for your DFS squads. And then I'm also going to reintroduce soccer to the podcast, where I'm going to be looking at the upcoming Copa America tournament, specifically the betting favorites that will take place right here in the U.S. of A. And stick around where I continue to update you guys on what the finals MVP betting odds look like. They have stayed the same for pretty much the entire week, but I still want to go over them again, just if you are curious about them. But before we begin today's show, I uh, always ask that you like, follow, and subscribe to the show. We also do receive a lot of different tips. Uh, so please leave the link, please leave at the link, gsmc.cloud, any tip or donation if you do feel so inclined. It is a huge support to the network, both me and my fellow podcasters, so anything you give is greatly appreciated by all. Now, let's get right into today's show. Like I said before, we are going to start off with a very exciting segment. feels like the first time in forever, like I said. I am going to be talking about a finals game in the NBA. The Celtics and the Mavs are going to kick things off Thursday night, tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern Time. Should be a good one. It should be a great game one. As we saw with both teams, they played fantastic games one in the conference finals. I hope it carries over to the NBA finals. Now, looking at the betting odds for tomorrow's game. Boston is giving six and a half points at home to Dallas. The over-under is 214.5, which in my opinion is a little bit low for two very high-scoring teams. Moving over to the fantasy side of things. These players are going to be very pricey because of there's only one series, and these are the cream of the crop in terms of superstar players and storylines. Starting off with the two most scrutinized players in this finals, and that is Luka and JT. Starting off with Luka tomorrow night on DraftKings, he is going to be valued at 13.6K. Pretty pricey for him, but he is valued at a 588 fantasy points not too shabby projection there in turning over to jason tatum he is projected to go for 11.8 k and 56.3 fantasy points there so as you can see both of these stars weighed very heavily in terms of fantasy i think that they are the uh uh kind of uh proponents for both of these squads they are the Two betting favorites right now for finals MVP. I'll get into that later. But these two are the standard in terms of daily fantasy basketball. If you are willing to uh, bust your budget a little bit and go for the fences and and swing for the fences, these are the two guys, the two superstars, the two most focused on figures in this particular series that you should swing for in daily fantasy basketball. Now, getting into kind of the stars that are going to need to step up or two players that are going under the radar, so to speak. Obviously, one is going to be Chris Stapp's Porzingis for me. He is returning from injury, and when he is with the Celtics and healthy, they are a much different team. They are tougher to defend. He brings a volatility to the offense that is unmatched in all of basketball, as we saw in the regular season. So, Chris Tapps Porzingis tonight, he is going for 8.2K on the market, and he's projected to have 40.8 fantasy points, a little bit lofty for someone coming back from an injury, so we'll have to see how he translates to real game action. I think that Missoula will limit some of his minutes, so I do not think he will hit that fantasy projection. 
But on the Mavs side of things, there are a myriad number of options for the Mavs because they really are a team-centric team. It is not focused on Luka and Kyrie all the time. And so I'm very confident to think that a role player will step up and uh, assume a mantle as the third option on this Dallas Mavericks team. And tonight, I think it is going to be P.J. Washington, a guy who we haven't really talked about that much on this podcast. He was a key acquisition for from the Charlotte Hornets for this Dallas Mavericks squad who was looking to make some noise to even get into that fifth seed in the Western Conference. They were sitting right around the wild card, and after P.J. Washington was acquired, they were able to ascend further up the ranks of the Western Conference, and they are, he is a huge reason as to why they are now in the NBA Finals with a real shot at uh, shocking the world and beating these Celtics. So... Even though tonight he's only projected at 6.4K, so he's not necessarily a huge budget buster for you there. He is only projected to have 24.5 fantasy points. Obviously not a lofty amount, but still a solid amount if you're looking for that utility guy, that glue guy. He also is very effective in terms of defensive standings. Uh, So if you're looking for someone who can get you a couple critical points in terms of defensive stats, look out for P.J. Washington. And also, the thing about Dallas is they are also a very high three-point shooting team. And P.J. Washington, that is one area he has kind of lacked in in his run with Dallas uh, this past couple of months. So should he elevate his three-point shooting percentage, he becomes one of the most dangerous players in this final series. And I really do think that Ultimately, P.J. Washington, as you will see later on in the show when I go over my top 10 most important fantasy pieces for both this series and the Stanley Cup, we will see that P.J. Washington does make an entry on that list. And I'm really looking forward to see how he handles certain matchups and, uh, yeah, just seeing how this whole Mavs game plan comes together. Now, getting on to more of the preview side of things. Obviously, Boston deserves to be the favorite because they have been the favorite all year. They, The team that many expected to come out of the Eastern Conference, but I still think this is kind of a high spread for them. And it, and it feels weird saying that, but ultimately I think that the Pacers showed that Boston can be played very closely and it's up to their opposition to kind of push themselves over that edge because obviously Boston is much better than they were in previous years at coming back from large deficits as we saw multiple times in the Pacer series and so that is the Dallas challenge but in my ultimate opinion in tonight's game Boston will not cover the spread. I think this is going to be one of those games where Boston gets out to an early lead. They're going to have a lot of momentum coming out. They want to uh, kind of impress the home fans, something that they haven't really done over these past couple of postseasons. And then Dallas will begin to claw their way back into the game. They're going to find... uh, Luka and Kyrie more often. They're going to integrate more of their role players. It's going to be a very back and forth kind of game. These are two very high scoring teams. I ultimately think this will hit the over. So do take the over, but take Boston to not cover. Take the Mavs to cover, in fact. I think this is going to be something like a three to four point game. I think ultimately Boston pulls it out in the end. Just because of the fact that I'm really intrigued to see how Chris Porzingis matches up defensively with guys like Dan Gaffin and Derek Lively, who we'll mention later in the show. But I really do think that Boston, right now, they have more rest. They have the experience of being here. Luka and Ky- well, Kyrie definitely does have the experience, and he definitely wants to beat his former team. But Luka, this is his first NBA Finals. This is his first true test. Ultimately, though, Boston will be more scrutinized going forward because this is like they're not their first rodeo, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on them from different pundits and different sports talk radio shows, and it's going to be a lot of pressure on them. But I think they are better prepared to handle it due to the fact that they have the depth now, they have the role players that they need to elevate this team to a title, and so I think that Boston steals Game One. I don't expect them to cover. I do expect it to hit the over. So I'm really, really, really hyped for tomorrow's game. I hope you all are too. It has been a long time coming, it feels like. We finally get basketball after what felt like a year 
before this NBA Finals happens. So I'm really excited to tune in and see how this goes. But that should just about do it for the first segment of today's show. Coming up next, like I said before, we're going to be looking at the most important players in both finals in terms of fantasy. And this is the first time that my personal opinion comes into play when I rank these players. So it should be a great segment. You don't want to miss out. We will be right back on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Getting my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. I'll diss my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The news it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Hello and welcome back everyone to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I hope you liked the first segment, getting back into the swing of talking basketball. But before we move on to the second segment, I do want to remind you guys yet again to leave a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. It is a huge support to the network, me, my fellow podcasters. So do consider doing that. We are going to stick with this graphic for the second segment. No, it is not the Stanley Cup final one just yet. It is, in fact, the NBA Finals one, who I think are the most vital fantasy options that you should roster going forward in terms of daily fantasy basketball. A lot of interesting players, a lot of interesting storylines in this segment, so I'm really, really thrilled to present this one to you guys. So without further ado, let's get straight into it, starting off with a number 10 player who we already mentioned last segment. P.J. Washington. What an acquisition he has been for the Dallas Mavericks this season. He comes over from the Charlotte Hornets when Dallas is kind of in the midst of a battle to kind of reach into the upper echelon of the Western Conference standings. What do they do? They acquire P.J. Washington and all of a sudden they become a fantastic team that isn't revolving around just two players. And that is the reason why the Dallas Mavericks are where they are right now. P.J. Washington this season, 1,809.7 fantasy points overall. In these past 10 games, however, he really shined with 286.2 fantasy points in the past 10. Ultimately, he is going to be one of the defensive cogs in the Dallas Mavericks machine when Boston Celtics are on their uh, offensive attack. P.J. Washington is a huge part of that defensive game plan. It's not just guys who we're going to get to in the future like Derek Lively and Dan Gafford, but P.J. Washington just adds that physicality and grit to a Mavs team that really, really wants to focus on not just Luka and Kyrie's production, but overall teamwork ethic. And P.J. Washington is the face of that kind of movement. He has been the face of their defensive front. He has helped this uh, Dallas team find a different identity that doesn't just revolve around superstardom. And I really am excited to see how P.J. Washington pans out in this NBA Finals. I think he's one of the most exciting players to watch in the NBA Finals going forward. Coming in at the number 9 position, this is kind of a weird pick in my opinion, but Ultimately, I think that he can play a factor here, and that is Maxi Kleba. Obviously, his stats have not been that good, mainly just because he's been injured. Obviously, he suffered an AC joint separation two series ago, and he tried to come back in the past conference final series against Minnesota. But as we saw, he really did not look ready or fit to play in that series. 
but he is a, a huge asset not only in real life but to your fantasy team should he play and should his stats kind of inflate as his injury heals so it's going to be interesting also to see how Jason Kidd tries and rotates him in because he already has that steady kind of front court partnership in Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford because of the fact that Maxi Kleba is in was injured. So I think that Maxi Kleba is going to be a player that is slowly integrated into these finals if he's feeling up to it. But just look out for him on uh, your daily fantasy boards because I think he is a interesting kind of asset that adds another dimension to this Dallas defensive front. So I think Maxi Kleba at number nine can be a surprise to people, but I feel confident putting him here should he play. Coming in at number eight, another guy who's going to be critical in this series more offensively than defensively because obviously, as we saw, he had his defensive struggles in the Pacers series, Al Horford. Al Horford has been a guy who wants to reach that mountaintop. He has been a journeyman in this league for quite some time, and he knows what it takes to face adversity, face struggles in this league, and he just wants to help this Celtics team in a championship window that's closing more rapidly than people think get over the hump finally. I just think that Big Al, in terms of offensive output, can have a huge game as we saw uh, in game three of the Indiana Pacers series where his three-pointers helped Boston propel themselves to that win there. So obviously he's not going to be as reliable as some of the players higher up on this list, mainly due, due to his defensive liabilities. But Al Horford is going to be an interesting option in these NBA finals because I think Joe Mazzullo wants to use him in a more offensive role. Obviously he wants to bring back KP to help defensively. So someone in kind of that big man realm is going to need to step up offensively and I think Al Horford can be the person to do that. So look out for him if you just want more of that oomph for your offensive front. He did have uh, 257.1 fantasy points over the last 10 games in these playoffs. He had 1,461.6 fantasy points this season. So you can see the up and down uh, variance of his fantasy game. But I feel kind of okay putting him here because I do like him offensively as a weapon for the Celtics. Coming in at number seven is a player we've talked about a lot on this channel. A player I'm really thrilled has made his first NBA Finals as a rookie, no less. He's been a huge part in their postseason run, especially in their defensive identity being one of the better defenses in the postseason. That is Derek Lively II. He had 225.11 fantasy points in his last 10 games. 1,202.6 fantasy points as a rookie. Not too bad, obviously. He is more known for his defensive. He's not going to put up the offensive production you would want in a fantasy player, but he can steal you a couple of games because of his defense. And this defensive matchup against Christos Porzingis is going to be very intriguing because obviously Derek Lively is this energetic young uh, forward in this Dallas system who is going to want to heighten the pace of the game, wants to move the tempo of the game. And Christos Porzingis might not be ready for him, so look for him to perhaps elevate his scoring potential and also maintain his defensive uh, solidity. So Derek Lively at the number seven spot is all right with me because of the fact that in this matchup with Chris Asperzingis, he may have the slight advantage due to the fact that Chris Asperzingis hasn't really played that much. So look out for Derek Lively in these finals. Coming in at number six, the man of the moment, it seems, Chris Asperzingis. This kind of player that when he's on his game just adds that versatility that the Celtics offense and defense really needs to just adds that height and length that really isn't in this Celtics team absent of him so I really do believe that Chris Tapps Porzingis is one of the better fantasy options in this NBA Finals should he uh, live up to the hype of who he means to the Celtics 
in the past 10 fantasy points he's played, obviously this is kind of going back to the regular season. He did not play much in the playoffs. He had 353.6 fantasy points. So you can see how much he means to the Celtics as a fantasy player. This season he had 2,025.3 fantasy points overall. So you can see that Christos Porzingis not only is a fantastic player for the Celtics in real life, but is also a high-end fantasy asset. You're going to have to kind of wait this guy out, see how he does in game one, maybe not roster him for game one, maybe for game two, if he proves that he's fully fit and ready to go for the Celtics. But moving forward, he still is a huge fantasy asset for you, should you be willing to take the risk. Coming in at number five, this might shock a lot of people, but it doesn't shock me at all because I really love what this guy has done in the postseason, and that is Dan Gafford. Hugest defensive player in this series, in my opinion, just due to the fact that I think combined with Derek Lively, he is one of the more intriguing fantasy options in this uh, list. He, in the last couple of games, has been perfect in terms of field goal shooting percentage. So if you want a guy who doesn't score that many points, but has that nice, good shooting percentage that you're looking for, look out for him. In his past 10 fantasy games, he had 230.1 points. So you can see he's not necessarily the scorer that you would want. He has 2,022.9 fantasy points this season. So he puts them right on edge with Chris Porzingis in terms of fantasy production overall. And in moving into this matchup, I don't think he'll necessarily be directly on Porzingis. He'll switch with Derek Lively back and forth. So he's definitely going to get his defensive production, but look for him to be one of those kind of scoring threats outside of Luka and Kyrie that can really help these Mavericks make this a series. Coming in at number four, this is going to shock a lot of people as well because this is a string of Celtics players. I I did leave Kyrie Irving off this list just to warn you guys, just because of the fact that while he's an interesting asset fantasy-wise, I wanted to highlight more of these kind of role-player guys who can really make a difference not only on the court, but in your fantasy squad. So, fair word of warning there. But coming in at number four is Drew Holiday. Another key acquisition that the Celtics made that truly made them the genuine title contenders and title favorites for this year. Drew Holiday is an incredible defensive player, incredible offensive production as well when he's on his game and feeling it. In the past couple of games, only 191.1 uh, no, actually, 1,911.1 fantasy points for the entire season. In the past couple of games, he had 307.7 fantasy points there. So you can see that Drew Holiday is coming to life in this postseason, proving that he is the key acquisition the Celtics needed. Obviously, a huge defensive series against the uh, Indiana Pacers. A couple of key steals there, a couple of key blocks. Overall, him and Derek White are one of the best defensive backcourts in the league and in these NBA Finals. I do believe that those two are going to be the cogs for the South for the Celtics defensively at the very least, combined with Chris Depps, who is really up in the air. So expect Drew Holiday to have a huge series as kind of the barometer for the Celtics on offense and kind of that uh, bell cow on the Celtics defense for them. Coming in at number three, a guy who's had an incredible postseason, Eastern Conference Finals MVP against Indiana, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown has been one of those fantasy players who has this huge spurts all of a sudden, I, in my opinion, is quickly becoming the Celtics' best player. I think that he is ultimately better than Jason Tatum. His fantasy stats, on the other hand, are very volatile, but... In these NBA Finals, I do expect him to have a fantastic series. Continue his offensive output, excuse me, there. In the past 10 games, he had 375.4 fantasy points. That is a huge number for him to put up. In the season, he had 2,521.4 fantasy points. So as you can see, Jalen Brown, highly volatile guy, but I do expect him to have a fantastic NBA Finals. Obviously, a lot of pressure is on his shoulders, not as much on Jason Tatum's shoulders, but still the pressure will be there for him. But I think he's quickly overcoming it and developing into the player we know he can be in both real life and fantasy. So I'm really thrilled to see how he plays in this series. 
coming in at number two, probably the most scrutinized player in this series. If the Celtics lose, they, the pundits and other sports talk radio shows will be saying that this guy is the reason why, and it's Jason Tatum. I've talked about Jason Tatum a lot in terms of fantasy on this show, and as you know, he is a very, very, very scrutinized uh, fantasy player as well as in real life. So, But he is proving that this postseason, while he's not necessarily putting up the offensive production people would expect of a guy trying to break into superstardom, he is very, very, very fantastic fantasy-wise. In the last 10 games, he averaged 500.5 fantasy points. That is a huge, fantastic number for him. In this season, he averaged 3,302.2 fantasy points there. So overall, you can see that Jason Tatum is one of those fantasy players who you're like, okay, I'm going to take a risk on this guy because I think he can give me a lot of different stats that I need, a lot of different areas of need that he hits. But ultimately, he is one of those guys who you really are kind of betting and wishing and hoping on to maintain that level. So we're going to have to see that is going to be the question for Jason Tatum moving forward. Can he, both in real life and in fantasy, maintain those good stretches of fantasy production and real life production? That is the question. That's why he's high as number two on this list, but number one overall. It should be no surprise to you all. It is, in fact, Luka Doncic, the best player in the world, the best player in this postseason. We cannot say enough about him in terms of the NBA right now. I think that if the Mavs somehow win this series, Luka will be the new face of the NBA and one of the potential MVP favorites for the next decade or so. I think he's quickly becoming one of those guys who you can't necessarily find any good defensive matchups that you're feeling uh, solid about. So he's definitely going to have a lot, a lot of points. It is reflected in his past 10 game stats as well. In his past 10 games, a whopping 553 fantasy points. That is incredible. In the season, he blows a guy like Jason Tatum out of the water with 4,167.4 fantasy points. You can see that Luka Doncic is as good as gold in terms of fantasy. He gets you points. He not only cares about getting points, but he cares about distributing the ball to his role players. He learns, He's learning that quick, quickly now in these playoffs, and it's the reason why he is in this position. He also sometimes gets rebounds, so he's overall a triple-double machine that you will have no worries about putting into your fantasy options. Obviously, in terms of most important, you can be kind of skeptical about it because, okay, he's just the guy who can, you can lock in and be worried about that. That's the, that's the point. Luka Doncic is the only lock in terms of fantasy basketball, in my mind, that people can be truly confident about producing at every single stat line. So... That should just about do it for these top 10 fantasy options for the NBA Finals. After the break, we will switch over to the NHL, where I'll be discussing my uh, top 10 fantasy options for the Stanley Cup Finals. It should be a great segment that you guys will not want to miss. We'll be right back on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. We're at the midway point of the show, and this upcoming segment should be a great one. We did the top 10 fantasy options for the NBA Finals. Now I'm going to discuss who you should roster in terms of daily fantasy hockey for the Stanley Cup Finals. Obviously, these two teams are so well balanced. There's going to be a lot of great players. This is my personal opinion. You guys do not have to take this by rote. I'm just offering you my advice as to who I think will step up in both of these finals. But without further ado, let's get into who I believe you should roster for the Stanley Cup finals. 
coming in at number 10 is a goalie. Yeah, in terms of fantasy hockey, goalies are very important, and these two goalies will be heavily scrutinized in these series, especially this guy, Sergei Bobrovsky. We've talked about how fantastic of a run he's had this postseason, 12-5 and five over these past couple of games in the postseason, a fantastic run, huge con Smythe favorite, we'll get to that later on in the show, but Sergei Bobrovsky, let's look at his fantasy stats uh, overall this season, he's at 279.6 fantasy points, 49.6 average in the past te uh, couple of games. So as you can see, Sergei Bobrovsky in between the creases is a solid option anytime in terms of fantasy hockey because of the fact that he is one of those guys in the NHL who has been doing this for such a long period of time. In his second Stanley Cup Finals, he wants to deliver this. He's going to be one of the most organized players in the Stanley Cup final. And he's the safest bet after another, the only other guy in, or goalie in this fantasy uh, uh, Stanley Cup finals implications. So Sergei Bobrovsky is as good a bet as gold in between the creases. Coming in at number nine, though, is the other goalie in these series who's going to have to be fantastic in order for the Oilers to have any chance of winning the Stanley Cup, and that is Stuart Skinner. Obviously, very controversial goaltender, much maligned goalkeeper by a lot in the NHL sphere, mainly due to the fact that the Oilers as a team have been so well constructed over the past years, but they just haven't found that number one goalie. And Stuart Skinner, a lot of people think he might be the answer, but a lot of people don't. And what better place to prove himself than on the stage of the Stanley Cup Finals? In the past couple of games, he had 38.6 fantasy points average, 246.1 this season. Obviously, a little bit lower than a guy like Sergei Bobrovsky. Obviously, not as high profile as a guy like Sergei Bobrovsky, but I put him here because of the fact that he will be put under the lights, put to the test by this Florida Panthers squad, unlike any other squad he's faced in this postseason. So I'm really, really intrigued to see if Stuart Skinner can hold up to it. He's a huge risk in terms of uh, picking him up over Sergei Bobrovsky in terms of fantasy, but I'm confident that Stuart Skinner is going to have a good game or two in the Stanley Cup Finals and be the reason that Edmonton could potentially win this series. So look for him, as always, to be a kind of option if you're not feeling Sergei Bobrovsky on any given night. Coming in at number nine, I mean, number eight, rather, a fantasy darling of mine, a guy who we've talked about too many times in this show to count, but one of the players I really, really loved this postseason, Sam Reinhardt, just an incredible overall athlete. Just one of the uh, bell cows of this uh, Florida Panthers team, carrying the weight of the load, carrying the burden, being one of those, like, not necessarily goal-scoring threats, but just overall threats. Fantastic in the face-off, on the power play. Fantastic in terms of Anything you want him to do on the ice, he is at the Panthers' back end call. In terms of fantasy points over this whole season, 443.8 fantasy points, 37.5 in these past couple of games. And trust me, I know you're sick and tired of me talking about Sam Reinhardt, Sam Reinhardt, Sam Reinhardt all the time. But he is that good. I think that you're not going to find a more overall well-rounded uh very well structured kind of player than Sam Reinhardt in this Stanley Cup final. I think he is a first choice option in terms of fantasy draft boards. I think he ne he needs to be in your fantasy lineup almost every game because that's how vital he is not only to the Panthers but potentially to you guys as well in terms of winning daily fantasy hockey. He is a proven winner and I think that Sam Reinhardt is a huge reason as to why the Panthers are where they are and a huge important factor as to why they could win the Stanley Cup final. Coming in at number seven, a guy who we haven't really talked about and I want to see more production out of, especially in the Stanley Cup final, because he is kind of that quote-unquote star for the Panthers. They don't necessarily want to be known as stars because they're a team kind of structure, but he is, in my opinion, the quote-unquote star of the Panthers. That is Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk, he had 391.5 fantasy points this season. 
and he averaged 46 fantasy points over these past couple of games. But Matthew Kachuk is just a player who I want to see step up. That is why he is on this list. Should the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup final, I think that Matthew Kachuk will have to be a huge reason why. I don't. I think that you can get production from your lower level centers, but Matthew Kachuk is definitely one of those guys who, in between the first and second line, needs to be the kind of guy who carries the load offensively for Florida because, as we all know, I think the Florida Panthers are the better offensive team. They're going to be on the offensive for large parts of all these games. And so Matthew Kachuk just needs to be that guy. Not necessarily the enforcer for the offense, but just the guy who is the proved to be the leader that can really help this team get over the hump for this time around. And so Matthew Kachuk being here is just a testament to who I want him to be, not only in real life, but in fantasy. So look for him on fantasy draft boards as a guy who could potentially steal you a couple of games this uh, Stanley Cup final. Coming in at number six, the longest tenured oiler on this list, a guy who I'm really hoping is going to have a great series, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. it has been a long time coming for this guy. Huge player in the past series against Dallas, a couple of huge games for him late on that series. And I'm looking for him to carry over that production into the Stanley Cup Final. He had 284.9 uh, fantasy points this season and 39 fantasy points these past couple of games. And look, obviously he's not the biggest offensive player for the Edmonton Oilers and he doesn't necessarily have to be because he knows he has guys in McDavid and Dreisaitl who will carry the load there but Brian Nugent Hopkins is just a reliable player he is stuck by the Oilers through thick and through thin and so I really hope that Ryan Nugent Hopkins can get off on the right foot in the Stanley Cup Finals he is a huge asset to this team, a heartbeat of this team the players on the Edmonton Oilers love him, he is a guy who you will definitely love if you roster in your daily fantasy hockey team just due to the fact that he can at any given moment take the reins take the mantle for the Edmonton Oilers in terms of production he is just a solid player overall and I really hope he has a fantastic uh, Stanley Cup final coming in number five another Sam another guy who we talked about a lot on this show Sam Bennett, acquired from the Calgary Flames for Florida, one of the players who came over from trade and just immediately incorporated himself into this team. Obviously, he's not necessarily a huge fantasy point getter, but I really love Sam Bennett because in these playoffs, he has been very fantastic. He's been fantastic in many different areas that are vital in fantasy, like power play, penalty kill, what have you. So I think that Sam Bennett is going to be one of those Florida Panthers players who definitely makes a name for himself in the Stanley Cup Finals and elevates himself into stardom, maybe even into the Conn Smythe Finals MVP watch if he plays up to the standard I expect of him. Over these past couple of games, he's averaged 36.5 fantasy points. Points, 232 7 rather 0.5 fantasy points for Sam Bennett this overall season so obviously he is kind of a high risk high reward kind of guy I really love Sam Bennett mainly based on this postseason but I just think that him at number five feels right just because of the fact that he can obviously fall off the uh, fall off a cliff or elevate his game to help the Florida Panthers. He is the guy, the bridge between who people believe the Panthers stars are and kind of their lower end guys. And he is the bridge in these rankings due to that factor. So Sam Bennett, look for him on your fantasy draft boards. I'm really intrigued to see how he plays this series. Coming in at number four, another guy who is a quote-unquote star for the Florida Panthers who I want to see get going this uh, series, Alexander Barkov. Obviously, when you think of the Florida Panthers, him and Matthew Kachuk are the first two names that will come out of your mouth, but Barkov's could be first. Over this past couple of games, only 37 fantasy points for him, 352.9 fantasy points for this season for Alexander Barkov. So Alexander Barkov is one of those players who obviously has the production in him. He's a well-rounded player for this Florida Panthers team, the captain of this team, one of the heartbeats of this squad. But he just needs to prove it in these uh, Stanley Cup finals, both in real life and in fantasy. 
this past series he has not had the scoring production people expect of him so look for him in the stanley cup finals to try and up that level of production that we know he has in him coming in at number three the breakout star of the postseason in terms of point production the breakout star of the regular season as well for the edmonton oilers be quickly becoming a bit part of the big three in edmonton and evan bouchard famous for the bush bomb goals we've seen this postseason just an incredible player for a young defenseman no less that's the number three point score overall in the playoffs as a defenseman this postseason so just an incredible story this season impressive 396 points for a defenseman for a defenseman 63.5 fantasy points these past couple of games for evan bouchard so this is a guy who you can slide in because as a defenseman you really don't expect that production out of him and he is definitely a player who has been surprising in real life and fantasy i think he's going to have a great stanley cup final on both on both ends of the ice because of the fact that he has shown his versatility can shine through in big moments so evan bouchard in my opinion he's a lock for fantasy teams in my opinion because you just don't get that production you don't expect that production out of a defenseman especially one as young as him and only like his second full post season so evan bouchard i'm really confident in in terms of fantasy and in production in terms of the stanley cup final coming in at number two his running mate the second overall point scorer in these playoffs leon dreisaitl just an incredible player part of that former duopoly with Connor mcdavid evan bouchard is breaking into that like we said before but let's focus on leon leon dreisaitl obviously he has been a player who has been through the ringer the last time edmonton was in the conference finals he was obviously playing very hurt and they were swept by the colorado avalanche because of it and so leon dreisaitl is just looking for that redemption story he wants to get over the hump with his partner in crime Connor mcdavid who is going to be the number one player on this list i'm sorry i had to spoil it for you guys but leon dreisaitl is just as integral to the edmonton oilers uh squad as player like leon Mc Connor mcdavid he has made himself into a star of this league 421.2 fantasy points overall this season 37 these past couple of games so leon dreisaitl is someone who you really want to have in your daily fantasy squad because he is a superstar and it's not just the guy at number one for edmonton and he is going to be very hungry come the stanley cup finals so i think he's going to do very well in real life and in fantasy but as i said before no surprise here Connor mcdavid is at number one what more can we say about this player this young man Stanley Cup or not is one of the greats of all time. I, I just got to say it because he's proven time and time again. He just has a skill set that we haven't really seen from any other player in NHL history. I, he's just an incredible uh, player on the ice. The way he moves on the ice is just incredible. This past season, he has proven that he's not just a goal scoring threat. He's, he's becoming one of the most well-rounded players we've seen. And to prove it, in terms of fantasy this season 505.4 fantasy points 55 in these past couple of games he is as good as gold in any fantasy sport Connor mcdavid in any fantasy port is going to be one of the best players as an option for you ever just because of the fact that he is who he is he is the star of the oilers and the star of the league stanley cup or not i wish him the best of luck in the stanley cup finals obviously because i want this for him so badly but this is his first time at the stage and so the really the pressure is just not going to be on him as much as maybe in the future if he should he go to more stanley cup finals but i just want to see him play with that freedom that is so enjoyable to watch and Connor mcdavid ultimately is just going to be that guy for you in the fantasy playoffs 
that should just about do it for this segment of today's show. Coming up next, for only the second time in the history of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, the beautiful game makes its triumphant return as we go over the betting favorites for the Copa America tournament taking place right here in the U.S. of A. So you don't want to miss to see if the USA does make that list. We'll be right back with that exciting, exhilarating segment for you guys. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. This should be a very thrilling segment for most of you guys. For only the second time in the history of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, I present to you footy, the beautiful game, Jogo Bonito. Soccer makes its triumphant return to the podcast. And this segment is unlike any other because we are going to be talking about a tournament that is taking place right here in America coming up in a couple of weeks, the Copa America tournament. Now, this is a very interesting uh, top five that I have for you guys. I did decided not to do the top ten because of the fact that these are teams that on the international level are so well known, a lot of stars in this team. But there are also teams that are kind of in a transitional period and also are looking to break through, maybe break through all the way to the finals, and so I'm really excited to present to you guys the betting odds for this tournament. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Coming in at number five is the host country, the US of A. Go, go, USA. And I really, really think that this is a proving ground for the US before they host the big boy tournament, the World Cup, in two years' time. I really think that for Greg Bear Halter's men, they really need to make at le the very least a semifinals run here to prepare for the World Cup because they don't want to embarrass themselves on a bigger stage than the World Cup because as the host nation, you really want to put your best foot forward and this tournament this summer is going to be very vital to their growth. I feel they do have the, the players now. Obviously, they bring in Folair and Balagoon. A lot of people were thinking that he could have gone to France. He had the choice. He comes to the U.S. and is a huge part of the reason why their striking position is now looking more solid than ever. They have guys like Christian Pulisic, Eunice Musa in their midfield, who I'm really excited about. Weston McKenney has been a stalwart. I think the main questions are going to be in their back line and their goaltending. Obviously, I really love what Matt Turner has done for the U.S., but is he that reliable of a goalkeeper? Obviously, we've seen that domestically. At the very least, he's not been as very good as we've seen him in a USA shirt. So look for that position to kind of be very volatile in terms of who Greg Bearhalter chooses. But overall, I think the back line as well, obviously you have guys who play in the MLS, so they don't necessarily have the international abroad experience, but a guy like Anthony Robinson could be the heartbeat of that back line. I really like what he has done in terms of playing abroad for Fulham. So look for him to be one of those guys. I, I like the USA sitting at plus 1200 in this tournament because of the fact that they are one of those teams that's looking to break through. And so I kind of like them a little bit further down the list. Obviously, as the host country, they are looking to put their best foot forward. So I really do expect Greg Bearhalter to go all out. I don't necessarily think he will overthink tactically either. I think he wants to maintain a solid setup that the U.S. can build upon for years to come. Coming in at number four is another tee that has a lot of question marks. A lot of people don't necessarily familiarize themselves with this team because they might not know some of the players here, but Mexico. Mexico is uh, a team that has had some great players over the year, has had a couple good moments over the years, but they really don't have the high-profile players you would want in a uh, betting favorite. So I'm wary about them. They're at plus 1,100. They don't. They are kind of in a transitional period, I would say. They do have guys like Juki Lozano, who has been doing it for quite some time. I still think Guillermo Ochoa is in goal for them. 
they have younger guys like Uriel Antuna who's trying to break through. So Mexico is just going to be one of those weird teams who I do expect them to make it out of the group stage, obviously, because uh, there are a couple weaker teams in this tournament. But Mexico, I don't expect to uh, go as far as people think. I think they're a quarterfinal uh, exit at best and wishful thinking semifinals for me. I think that Mexico should not be as high as people think. But coming in at number three is Uruguay, another team kind of in tradition at plus 500, who we make that big leap from Mexico to Uruguay. Uruguay is going to be an interesting team because this is beginning to get into the post Luis Suarez and Edinson Cavani period. You lose those two kind of strikers who you have been able to rely upon both domestically and internationally. And you bring in a guy in Darwin Nunez who we've seen had his struggles domestically for Liverpool. And so that's going to be the big question there because you definitely need a top-level striker in terms of uh, Central American, South American, and uh, North American style of play. So I do think that Darwin Nunez needs to step up if Uruguay need to have any hope. They are in a group with the USA. I do expect both of them to progress from that group, but I think the Uruguay will get farther than the US. I think they do have a shot at the final if Darwin Nunez finds his scoring boots. I look that Darwin Nunez could be an interesting dark horse pick if you want to bet on the golden boot race because of the fact that he is a striker who in an Uruguay system might have a little more freedom, but overall I'm really excited to see how he does. Coming in at number two, I think that they are ultimately the favorites of this tournament just because of their potency in the front line and the fact that they can rely on a couple of center backs and goalies who are some of the best in the world. That is Brazil. Obviously, Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo had fantastic domestic seasons. Vinny Jr. is looking to win the Ballon d'Or. That is how good uh, a, a domestic season he has had at Real Madrid. Congratulations to both of them for winning the Champions League. I think that that duo up front on the wings is an incredible partnership. And Richarlison is going to be a guy who a lot of people will have their eye on because domestically he has had his struggles, obviously moving from Everton to Tottenham. He hasn't really been incorporated into Ange's system that much for the Spurs, but internationally we have seen he can play at a very high level. And ultimately they have the best goalie in the tournament with Alisson Becker. I think that Alisson is ultimately becoming the best goalie in the world. He's done it for many years at Liverpool. Incredible one-on-one -on -one goalie. Look for Alisson to have an incredible tournament. When it, I think, in my opinion, he's the safest bet to win the Golden Glove if you're looking to bet on that as well. But Brazil at plus 225, in my opinion, should be the number one. But number one isn't that bad either. They also have a lot of talent. They have the best player in this tournament overall. In Argentina at plus 175. Obviously, with... Any team that has that little man in it, Leo Messi, you are going to be a favorite in any tournament. I think that ultimately Leo Messi just makes any team better. And not only is Leo Messi in this team, but you also only have a lot more creative flair than Argentina teams of the past have had with guys like Alexis McAllister in your midfield. You have a back line that is starting to get stronger, Cristiano Romero. Has performed very well domestically at Tottenham. He has been heavily scrutinized at Spurs domestically, but ultimately he has risen to the occasion for them. So they're beginning to get more solid in their back line, which was one of the areas where in the, 20, in, in, in the 2014 World Cup they were not as potent in. But right now, I think that this Argentina team is beginning to get more solidity everywhere, not just Leo Messi. You have guys like Julian Alvarez in their attack who's really threatening. And you have... Also one of the better goalkeepers in this tournament, Emmy Martinez, a huge guy in terms of their uh, World Cup win last time out. A huge uh, penalty saver. I think that he will save the most penalties in this tournament. But ultimately, Argentina sitting at plus 175 is a safe bet for them in this tournament. I think that Brazil ultimately is the, is the safer bet in, in terms of their uh, production overall. But I, I, I think that Argentina can be one of those picks that you wouldn't regret making by the tournament's end. So I think this is a really well-rounded top five in terms of Copa America tournaments. I'm really excited for this tournament because it is taking place in America. And I'm really looking forward to see how the U.S. plays 
in this tournament as they look ahead to the World Cup in 26. But that should just about do it for this segment of today's show. Coming up in our final segment, I know this is kind of a repetitive, same old, same old kind of uh, deal here, but we're going to be looking again at the finals MVP and kind of the fantasy implications and kind of the implications for if these players win, what this means for their careers. So I should be that you should be very excited about what should be coming up next on the show. We'll be right back on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for the final segment of today's edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. And I know this is kind of going to be one of those repetitive podcasts, but that is the beauty of being a podcaster is that I get to represent information to you guys. We are going to focus yet again on the finals MVP updates and implications. Should some of these players win these awards? what that would mean for their careers mainly because i think those are going to be very interesting storylines let's start off in the stanley cup finals where we have a lot of intriguing storylines obviously mcdavid still sits comfortably as the con Smythe favorite with plus 200 and ultimately i think he deserves to be even though edmonton is the underdog in the stanley cup finals in terms of betting odds there so if mcdavid wins this award obviously it will make him one of the superstars, one of the greats of all time in the sport. And I think that he could have another interesting case where if he loses the Stanley Cup, he could still win the Conn Smythe Trophy in a losing effort. And that could be a very interesting storyline. Not since Gaguerre did it many years ago, did someone win the Conn Smythe Trophy in a losing effort. But ultimately, when you look at the Panthers as a team, they don't necessarily have guys who you would think are threatening to be kind of that Conn Smythe favorite. They're not. They're just very well balanced. They spread the points around. So in terms of point production, betting on a Florida Panther over an Edmonton Oiler doesn't necessarily make that much sense because of the fact that should the Panthers win the Stanley Cup, they will have won it because of their structure and not necessarily having one dominant force like Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. So that means that I would be more confident if you would bet on an Edmonton Oiler just because of the fact that they are huge point scorers and they have this kind of superstardom surrounding them rather than a Florida Panther who might not score as many points. So that storyline is kind of settled if McDavid wins it then he will be obviously one of the greats of all time but should a Florida Panther win it I would say that it would be Sergei Bobrovsky that would be a huge storyline in the NHL a goalie winning the Conn Smythe trophy I think that he definitely will have deserved it because of the fact he had a fantastic postseason 12 and 5 908 save percentage this postseason just an incredible goalie a reliable goalie in the Stanley in the Stanley Cup uh, postseason, so I think that if you do want to bet on any Panther, it should be Sergei Bobrovsky, mainly due to the fact that he doesn't necessarily have this uh, aura about him that that he is a team player. He just is a goalie who stops the shots, and he is the last line of their defense, and he's just a damn good player in that position. But 
if you are looking to bet on an oiler besides Connor McDavid, I would say Evan Bouchard is a safe bet and a nice little pick there because of the fact that he is such a been a, such a dark horse kind of breakout player in terms of fantasy, in terms of real life. I'm really excited to see Evan Bouchard in his first ever Stanley Cup final. I do not think it will be his last, mainly due to the untapped potential he has. I think the sky's the limit for this kid. So if you want a kind of a more dark horse pick for uh, betting, do pick Evan Bouchard there. I really am confident in the fact that he will have an immense Stanley Cup Finals following an incredible run through the postseason. But that should just about do it in terms of the Stanley Cup odds. Let's move more into the Finals because the Finals, the NBA Finals, the NBA Finals are going to definitely be very heavily scrutinized due to the fact that you have these two teams with these two superstars who have been going back and forth in terms of betting odds and I definitely think it will remain that way as the series progresses and as betting trends get more volatile. I do believe that as it still stands Tatum deserves to be the finals MVP. He is the face of the Celtics but Doncic could be another one of those guys who in a losing effort uh, could win the NBA Finals MVP trophy. It has never been done in basketball, but I do think that Luka Doncic has the best chance to do that. And if he does, I still think he will be the best player in the world, uh, NBA Finals trophy or not. But kind of the players below those two, outside of that main tier, are kind of intriguing storylines. Obviously, you have a guy in Jalen Brown who won the Eastern Conference Finals MVP at plus 500, who, in my opinion, has been the better postseason player than Jason Tatum overall. So, should the Celtics win the final, that would be a very interesting debate. Do you give it to kind of the face of the Celtics and Jason Tatum if he plays even decently? Or do you give it to Jalen Brown, who's had the better overall postseason in terms of helping the Celtics get to this point? So that should be an interesting storyline. Obviously, Kyrie Irving will always be in a discussion for, for NBA Finals MVP wherever he plays. Obviously, he did play behind LeBron, and he does play behind Luka. But Kyrie has also been a huge part of uh, uh, this postseason run for the Dallas Mavericks. It's not all been Luka Doncic. So look for Kyrie to be a guy who in this series gets more respect in terms of NBA Finals MVP voting. And I wouldn't necessarily be disappointed or mad if people choose to vote Kyrie Irving as the Finals MVP should the Dallas Mavericks win or lose. But the guy behind them all, the guy who I think could change the whole narrative of how people view this NBA Finals MVP betting race, Chris Stapps Porzingis. I think that Chris Stapps Porzingis while he definitely will not win the NBA Finals Award, will take some luster off of both Tatum's and Brown's Finals MVP case. Now, obviously, since the Celtics are the favorites to win, and they probably will be expected to win this series, the story will definitely become, is Chris Stapps Porzingis helping or hindering the cases for both Tatum and Brown to win more awards because of the fact that now the Celtics offense has to incorporate a guy of KP's caliber who can get his own point production at any given time, and thus limits both Tatum and Brown in terms of their point production. I don't think necessarily that this will be a question. I think that KP will have more limited game action, and so Tatum and Brown will be kind of forced to carry that load for Boston. But it should be interesting to see how this series plays out as Kristaps Porzingis gets healthier, gets more and more involved in the series on both ends of the floor. How people will start to think, hey, if the Celtics win this series, who out of Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis was most important to the Celtics run? I think that once Porzingis comes in, the importance of points falls to the wayside because of the fact that the Boston Celtics have gotten here by being team-oriented. No one true player has had that star personality like with the Dallas Mavericks. And so, should the Celtics win, I will just be very intrigued to see how the, the voting committee, however they decide, choose to value 
say, a player of Porzingis' caliber in contrast to what Tatum and Brown have done already this postseason. I, I definitely don't think Chris Porzingis has the benefit of the doubt for, for, in terms of playoff performance because he hasn't been in the playoffs because he's been injured. Tatum and Brown will have that advantage over him. So it will just be a matter of canceling each other out between both Tatum and Brown should the Celtics win. It should be very interesting to see how that all plays out, but that will just about do it for today's edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I've been Christopher Shepard. Like, follow, and subscribe to the show. It is a huge support to the network. Do everything you can. Leave a tip donation. Link at gsmc.cloud. Anything is greatly appreciated, but I really hope you guys enjoy today's show. I definitely enjoyed this show, mainly because we've been talking about tomorrow's game. Should be a good one. We don't want to miss out on that. Tomorrow's show should also be fantastic. So, thank you guys yet again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys tomorrow back and better than ever. Thank you.